Joining us now is SNAP Network uh, Communications Director Michael McDonald. Thanks for joining us this morning. Jason, thank you. Happy to be here. Certainly. And, and the word closure gets used a lot in cases like this. When you feel like a report has come out and you're able to, to move forward. Is closure a word that you can use as you saw yesterday unfold? Well, I don't know if that word could be exactly used just yet. I, I think that validation is probably a better word to, to utilize. Uh, there's still a lot to be learned. Unfortunately, this report still leaves a lot of unanswered questions but it certainly is validation for individuals who have worked so long and so hard to get this report released and poured out and relive their own trauma in providing the attorney general with some horrific information. Tell us a little bit more. What do you feel like should have still been inside of that report? Well, we're looking at information uh, in regards to the individuals who are named in this report and their whereabouts and what is the diocese doing for those individuals that have been named in the report? In other words, are they out among us in society? Is there any type of oversight? Now we know that there are no criminal charges that uh, are, are levied against any one of them, but it still really is important for the diocese to make known the whereabouts of these individuals. That's the most concerning part. The second would be the redacted names. And we really want to understand why and what is the real big privilege behind those redacted names. As we enter into Holy Week, I think a lot of people wonder about the relationship that victim survivors now have with the church, because I'm guessing it's a tough relationship still for them. It certainly is. And, you know, most, most, survivors that I know of really could care less mm. about what the Catholic Church has to say uh, and and what they're what they're doing but there are a, an element of survivors that still have a, a good level of spirituality uh, and and really it's it's a loss it's mm. a huge loss because such a large part of our lives as a, as a victim myself was dedicated to Catholic grade school Catholic high school and the, the environment of a faith community within the Catholic Church. And, and that really is stolen. It's uh, robbed out of our souls and can never be replaced. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's just a, a very tough feeling behind that. I can only assume there is a text thread going on or, or multiple, you know, through a phone calls yesterday. Uh, what are some victim survivors saying to each other? I, I'm guessing this is the point where you're sort of consoling each other as you move forward. Yeah, there's a lot of frustration because of the information that was not in the report, but also a reliving of anger mm. of, of reading those horrific stories. I, I often share with people that when these secular reports come out, take it a little bit at a time because it can be extremely taxing, overwhelming, physically, mentally, and spiritually. So I, I'm, I'm certain that there's a lot of threads going around to encourage each other to take that break, take the breather and, and digest this at a time. The hard work is done. They have, uh, it, those who have stepped forward are the bravest individuals mm -hmm. that uh, I know. We were talking to a gentleman yesterday. He was uh, being interviewed and he says, listen, I spoke up for those who weren't able to, or I spoke up because I felt like I should have at the time. I just didn't have the strength to do it. I'm guessing it takes a lot for someone, especially I think you said the average was 50 years. They end up speaking up. It takes a lot to get to that point. Sure it does. If you really think about it, when individuals were abused between the ages of, of eight all the way up to, to 18, uh, who, who wants to talk about a sexual experience they had with a trusted member of the clergy? Nobody. And so it's going to take a very long time to be able to process that. But in the meantime, it gets suppressed and, and denial and shame, guilt, and many other life uh, events become manifestations in the meantime. And yes, it is, uh, it's very difficult to talk about. So that's why each and every time a story is shared, those who have sat in silence and still are sitting in silence today. Voices are carried in the voices that are loud. Michael, I know this is not easy. We appreciate you taking the time with us this morning. Thank you, sir. My pleasure to be with you. Certainly.